In the spirit of keeping things simple, I feel I owe you guys an update. Uh, I did part one the other day. I was chopping up the harness, and I didn't miss any parts, so there was really no no value of recording of the stripping of the loom, removing the sensors. We already know that. But where I'm at now is you get your two connectors, your blues and greens. I gutted all the wires and the sensors we don't need. I'm not running an electronic, electronic control transmission. We're running the Turbo 400. So I removed all the wires and stuff from the harness. So where I'm at is all these wires here in my hand. Most of them are pink. Pink, um, they will be segregated out, split up, and set off on their own 12 volt keyed source, fused of course, they'll be going to a fuse block. These pink wires are your power wires for your fuel injectors, uh, for your coil packs, cam sensor, crank sensor, um, stuff like that, idle air motor, stuff that requires a 12 volt power source in order for it to function properly. You got a couple wires here out of the harness, these are red with a white stripe. These are going to be for your 12 volt constant source. You need constant battery power. These will be fused of course, um, but again, yes, these will always have 12 volt power. Um, I basically have the loom just kind of, or the loom, the harness just kind of tidied up, so to speak. I got a couple loose wires here I saved. Uh, one's for your check engine light, the other one is for your OBD2 port, your diagnostic port. Um, and some of these are for your vehicle speed sensor. Highly recommend you run a vehicle speed sensor, even if you have an older vehicle that never came with one. Dakota Digital sells a nice little adapter for 40 or 50 bucks that works in line with your automatic or manual transmission speedometer output. And what are we looking at here? So, the sensors I kept, I'm trying to stay in the monitor here. Uh, if your alternator, your two wires for your alternator, your help energize the alternator. Keeping that, your alternator plug, it's a four pin plug. Over in here we have our ignition coils and our, I believe this is, I'm going to say bank two. Doesn't really matter at this point, I can always verify the wires, the wire color to figure out which bank it goes to, but regardless this is, I'm pretty sure it's bank two, your spark plugs and your injectors, your injector plugs. Also at the end, um, this is for your map sensor. That's important, very important sensor to have. Backtrack a skosh, coolant temperature sensor. Coolant temperature sensor, your coils, your injectors, plugs, knock sensor harness, important. This uh, vehicle or the engine is going to retain a cable driven throttle body. So you're going to need your idle air motor and your throttle position sensor harness. And this little bundle of stuff here. Uh, either bank one or bank two. Upstream oxygen sensor, very important. Uh, got a ground connection here, very important, keeping that. And your three wire. Looking at the colors and make sure I'm thinking pink. Yep, cam sensor. Very important as well. Moving aft. The uh, coiled up here, this is for your mass airflow sensor. It's optional. Some people tune speed density, you know, relying off the signal from your map sensor to determine uh, airflow, but I'm keeping it just to be on the safe side. Uh, probably the most important sensor in the harness here. Uh, it's going to be your crank position sensor. Without a crank position sensor, your vehicle simply doesn't run. Plain and simple. Uh, yellow, purple, and green wires. It's very long. This one will get shortened and gone through. The other bank of... Okay. This was bank one. Back and back track. And all the coils and ignition. This is all bank one over here. Bank two, ignition coils, and fuel injector plugs. And finally, all the way here in the back is your bank two, sensor one. You must retain the um, upstream oxygen sensors. Some people can get away with not running them. Why they do that is beyond me. But regardless, long story short, 
you only need a handful of sensors. The alternator, the field, what they call the field signal, blah, blah, blah. It's optional. You can run the alternator directly to the uh, one of the wires. I believe it's the gray wire here. You can run directly to your dash signal if you're charging light on your vehicle. And then like the power wire, which is orange, but it should be pink, you can run that obviously to a full volt source. It's just a handful of sensors, guys, especially if you're not running a 4L60 or 4L80 or whatever. It cleans up really nice. But these are this is all you need. I mean, yeah, it's a mess right now. The next step I'm going to show you guys is that I'm going to have it on the motor, wrapped around the motor where everything goes, where everything correlates, and then how I want it, how I want the, the harness to go. This is going to exit the computer, and the, the relays are going to sit by the um, HVAC. Uh, Climate control box, the blower box that Steve removed from his cutlass, because the engine's eventually going to go on his cutlass. So it's going to be at the rear right of the engine. Um, it's a piece of cake. I mean, no brainer, you need your coil um, connectors, your injector plugs, coolant temp sensor, map sensor, crank sensor, cam sensor, knock sensor, both oxygen sensors, and that's pretty much it. It's really not that hard. And this was out of the van. My buddy corrected me. Good old Tony. Thank you, Tony. Um, a Chevy one ton, six liter. And it's probably one of the longest harnesses that GM's shoved in one of their vehicles. You know, it's a big van. You got a lot of wiring. Um, in the harness here somewhere, too, I do have, and I didn't mention it, but it is in here. One of the, one of these greens is for your 12 volt it's your 12 volt signal for your fuel pump and it's going to go to a relay. I'll show you how to wire the relays here coming up. You're going to do two simple relays. One relay simply controls um, power going to all the sensors. It, these sensors don't draw much juice, if any at all. Even the coils don't draw very much juice. And the other relay is going to be for your fuel pump. Two relays, I'm probably going to use maybe four or five fuses for the whole system. And when it's all said and done, it's going to be a three-wire system. You're going to have 12-volt key, 12-volt hot all the time, and then I believe um, tech for your tachometer. That might be optional. That is optional. So It's a piece of cake. Let me, let me grab my, let me flip the old camera around here and give you guys a better point of view to show you what I'm dealing with. There's all your power wires, what's left of the wires, I gutted a lot of them out of the connectors. And I'm going to trim this down, it's still a rat's nest, cool temp, alternator field, IAC, TPS, bank one injectors, coil pack, and the map is in here too, map sensor. Blue and green, your knock sensors, probably should run them. Your grounds, grounds will all be ganged together. Bank one oxygen sensor, cam position sensor, ground, there's actually two grounds in this bundle. Two grounds. Your other bank of uh, injectors, coil, mass airflow, crank position, the other upstream oxygen sensor. Easy peasy. Felt like I owed you guys an update. It's still a rat's nest, but you're going to cut your own harness. You're going to be in the same boat as I'm in. And guess what? When it's all said and done, it's going to look great. And it's going to look great for you guys, too. It's not hard. So there's my little update. You guys stay warm if you're up here in the north. we got snow coming. Uh, Wednesday is probably when I'm going to start looming it on the engine, wrapping it around it, seeing how I like it, seeing, you know, I want to make it look nice. It's, once the, I want it to look nice. I want it to look discreet. I want it to look simple. I don't want to look at a rat's nest. So. All right, enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Talk at you real soon.